All right, folks, now that he gave me this awesome introduction, I have to actually be good this time. So, so my name is Mike King, like uh, Matt was saying. And today we're going to talk about the holistic SEO process. And it's kind of your, your standard SEO process reimagined. <clears throat> and I wrote a post on SEO Moz called uh, The New SEO Process, Stop Being Kanye. So I, I reached out to Kanye's agent, he was able to make it for this one. So, uh, let's just get into it. Yeah, yeah, so what we're going to talk about, obviously, is the holistic SEO process, opportunity discovery, and where that fits into this, um, content strategy, and at that point, Devin's going to take the stage, and uh, <coughs> technical development, so how that uh, fits into SEO, and then social strategy, which you can also call link building, but we like to think of it from the people aspect rather than just you know links and keywords. And then ultimately we're going to talk about uh, measurement and optimization. So, I wrote this post and this guy that my girlfriend was talking to, some digital guy, was like, oh you still do SEO? That's like the calculus of marketing. And it makes sense because you often got to do a lot of efforts in order to make something happen. And then after all that effort, you might get a small incremental uh, change. It's kind of like in calculus where you do all these differential equations and you get an answer like one. But if you choose your keywords right, if you're going after the right people, make the right content, you're gonna get exponential growth. So, yeah, SEO is the calculus part. And typically what the SEO process looks like is this. It's essentially, Figure out what your keywords are, figure out what the site's doing wrong, fix it, uh, use the keywords more, build some links, and then keep improving, whatever that means. And it leaves a lot out of it. So it doesn't really fit into the brand relationship model as it stands. Typically, when people do SEO, it completely interrupts uh, what's going on in the marketing mix. Rather than fitting into this and understanding the consumer, what is the brand doing? What is the organization doing? It's really just like, okay, let's throw some keywords and links. That's not marketing. That's just tinkering with websites. And it's way more powerful to do this from a standpoint of marketing. But the thing is, Kanye is not doing any market research. And Kanye is your typical SEO. And he, he's not going to do what Norris does, where he's sifting through data, figuring out who are these people, who are the people behind the search. That's kind of where this differs. We try to understand who the people are behind the search. And typically, in SEO, these are your kickoff questions. They're like, oh, what analytics package are you using? You know, do you have any other domains? What SEO efforts have been happening? Who are your competitors? Do you have social media accounts? Like, they just ask these really standard questions that don't really focus on the fact that there are people searching. <coughs> so, <clears throat> I, I think of that as like phoning it in. You're just like, okay, let me go through the motions, I'm doing my SEO. But you're not doing marketing. And this is a marketing function. So stop phoning it in. Let's do it the right way, right? And Kanye doesn't care about your audience. You know? But Mike King does. So we're going to talk about how the fact that the standard classifications of keywords in SEO are, oh, it works now are not enough to understand that there are people behind these searches. Typically, SEO says, are these keywords informational, which means somebody is looking for something. It's a really broad definition. Navigational, people that go to Google and type in Yahoo, like, who are these people? I don't get them. And then there's transactions, like, they're trying to buy or do something really specific. Now, that really just says that every search on the Internet is doing these three things. No, they're not. That, that's not enough. So the way I look at it is you can't even start thinking about keywords until you think about the people behind them. And SEOs are just like, hey, let's go into AdWords. Let's figure out what the keywords are. What's the search volume? No. <laughs> so the questions you should be asking is, what's the purpose of this site? What are you trying to get users to actually do once they get there? And then who is your target audience? You can't answer those questions with just going into AdWords keywords. Ranking is not a business goal. A lot of people, a lot of clients come to us like, yeah, we want to be number one for TV. Why? What are you, what are you trying to do with being number one for TV? Because 
when when I get you number one for TV, that's terrible traffic because people typing in TV, they're just trying to find out information about TV. They're not trying to buy a TV. If what you want to do is get more TV sales, you don't want to be number one for TV. You want to be number one for you know something that's farther down in the in the uh, tail. You want to be in like what they call the chunky middle. So that's probably something like LG Cinema TV um, with a, a model number. That's when somebody is most likely looking this up or buy something. So, Kanye will disrupt your campaign, and so will most SEOs, because we typically don't get brought in at the beginning, so we get brought in towards the end, probably like a day or two before launch, and they say, hey, can you guys press the SEO button? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's more than meta tags? Okay, we'll call you next time six months in advance, and then they don't call you six months in advance. And what happens is, if we do get engaged, we basically need to tear your whole site apart and say, okay, you did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, and this is and this, and then you're supposed to fix them. And then with that, ha what happens is we end up pushing your campaign back pretty significantly. So that's not what we should be doing here. We should be figuring out how can we supplement what they actually have. And the problem is, like, we think as though SEO is the only traffic driving channel. That's not true. All these things drive traffic. And some of the considerations for the website are not about SEO. Maybe they're about social media. Maybe they're about the fact that this is a, a campaign that's going to be driving traffic from traditional media. Like, for example, um, LG had a campaign about how the, their TVs were rated like, you know, three times better than Sony and Samsung. And they ran uh, print ads in the Times. And then they had like, uh, uh, um, what's it called? A, URL, a vanity URL driving to that. Um, site. So it didn't matter if they had search or not because they were going to get traffic to f meet their goals anyway. It's always good to have search. For example, I worked on um, Progresso and they were running these ads that weren't too obvious that it was Progresso. This is like a year or two ago. And the thing is, Campbell's was number one for the keyword soup. So if, if the Progresso campaign resonated with you at all and you typed in soup, you're going to go to Campbell's because you're not sure who it was. And then we actually were able to see that when the, the client's campaign started on TV, a lot more traffic went from search to Progresso. So it is important to have search when you're doing these other channels, but sometimes it's not a, the brand's you know, purpose. Kanye doesn't care about the other traffic. He's got his nice car. He, he feels like what he's doing is cool. Why do I care about what social media is doing? Why do I care about what PPC is doing? I'm trying to be number one. Because that's all he wants to do, is be number one. And I'm sorry, but that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, the main point here is that search is about fulfilling needs. People search because they have a need that they're trying to fulfill, <coughs> whether it's informational, transactional, or whatever it is. They're trying to do something. And you got to make sure that when you're creating stuff for search that you're helping these people do something. Now, it needs to be less about the what and more about the who and why. And at iAquire, that's exactly how we do it. So you might have heard of the knowledge graph where Google is like figuring out what things go together and then they're putting them in the right rail and they're trying to figure out what entity, entities are. Well, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Is so we're trying to understand that for the people that are searching. And I always say this, but this, the sweet spot for a holistic SEO is that part in the Venn diagram between search and social. Because in social media, people are telling you all day, every day, all the things they want, they care about, what they like, how they speak, what is the vocabulary that they use to describe things. And then you can use that as a research channel to figure out who are these people behind these searches. And this is what the new SEO process looks like. So here's what we start from market research and strategic planning. We kind of call that opportunity discovery, and that's typically where Norris lives. He is putting together the people behind these um, searches, understanding who they are, put, pulling all the data that he can find from various channels. And then we put together a digital strategy around it. So we kind of approach SEO as if we were quote unquote digital strategists. From there, we put together a content strategy. That's where Devin comes from. And we create the content that these people want, the things that are going to resonate with them so they can meet the goals that our client is looking for. 
And then from there, we do the technical development. So that's probably what you see most of for SEO, the site audits, <coughs> fixing canonicals and, and 301 redirects, things of that nature. And then from there, we do our link building. But we call that content marketing or social strategy because, again, it's not just about the link. It's about talking to people and getting people to link to you. From there, we measure, make sure we're hitting all those business goals. And then we optimize. We do our A-B tests, our MBTs, try to make things work better. Because it's not just about driving traffic. It's about hitting those goals. So, opportunity discovery. Let's get into it. Now, we do all of this stuff to figure out how we're going to hit those business goals. So that's market research, audience research, asset inventory, uh, competitive analysis, keyword research, measurement planning, all of that. So by the time we finish our opportunity discovery, we know everything going on in the space. We can speak <coughs> to the space as though we worked in it already. And we know exactly where we're going to go at. So business goals, the most important part. What are you trying to do? When people land on your website, what do you want to happen? In this case, let's say we're talking about LG, sell more 3D TVs, get more shares in social media, occupy more of the conversation. These can be intermediate goals to hitting, or excuse me, these two can be intermediate goals to hitting number one, but these are easy to measure. So if we get more of these, we know that we're going to get more of these. So when we do our measurement planning, we would lay this out and show how we would measure that. And then what we do is the market research. Again, this is Norris's job. And we create these, what we call client dossiers or um, audience reports about these people. Now, we, we had the one-sheeter version of these where it was just like the objective for the client. Who are the personas? Uh, what are the, what's going on in that space? What are the market insights? What are the customer insights? How do they feel about this space? You know, what are the hot topics? What's going on? What are the resources? And then we had a list of the influencers, but ultimately we've broken these out to two complete reports. So, we... We, this again, this is what Norris does. Um, he is like the persona magician. So we use uh, Experian Simmons and Nielsen Prism as our basis for our consumer insights. These are both um, market segmentation programs that we use to build our um, personas on top of. And then what we do, since those are all based on offline surveys, we use social APIs from, for example, LinkedIn's uh, PPC tool or Facebook's ad tool or Twitter's ad tool to see if these offline um, segments are valid online. Mm -hmm. And then at that point we have all the demographics and the psychographics and we build the user story, the engagement insights, and boom, we have personas. And this is going to fuel <coughs> everything else that we do. So again, Nielsen Prism is uh, <clears throat> uh, offering by Nielsen where they have segmented everybody in the United States into 66 core groups. And essentially, they're pre-built personas that we can pull from to build our own personas. And if you're doing local search, these are really awesome because you can just throw in the zip code and then you have an instant persona for that zip code. Here's what one of these segments looks like. Uh, we also use Experian Simmons, which is quite expensive. But is that also pretty cool because we can slice and dice all the questions in the survey and figure out how these people correspond? Because they have, what is it, 61? 71. 71 persona or segments pre-built. And then based on the um, survey questions that Norris chooses, we see how well they correspond with those different attitudes. And then we can build the personas on top of that. An example of what one of those personas would look like. We have the user story, the key traits, digital behavior, engagement insight. And these are all things that are going to filter back into that content strategy and as well as that link building strategy. So, <clears throat> what we really want to understand is not just the person, but what is it that they need? Where are they at in the consumer decision journey? And that's awareness, familiar familiarity, consideration, purchase, and loyalty. So, where does their search have them at? And we map that back to the keywords. So, in this case, we're talking about flowers. Somebody that's looking for flowers, they're, they're really high funnel. Their awareness. They don't know who they want to buy uh, flowers from. But if they're like, oh, buying chrysanthemums, they're ready to buy something. So they may not know who they're buying from, but they know they want to specifically buy right now. And we treat these people differently. We, we know that this person is different from this person. This person is a high temperature um, persona, and this one is just like, oh, I'm looking around. And then you have somebody who's like, what flowers for a first date? They're in a consideration phase. So they're trying to figure out who they're talking to, or excuse me, they, they're trying to figure out what to do for this first date. 
And so our content will reflect that. So when they land on the page, they're going to be like, oh, this is exactly what I was looking for. So they're more likely to take action. Now, we also map the content that we create to that position in the funnel. So we know that people in an awareness phase, they're more likely to just be looking around. So maybe an infographic makes sense because we can engage them at a higher level and they're likely to just share something and then they may influence someone else to come back to our site and then take action. But we know that somebody who is in the purchase phase is more likely looking for a guide on what to buy and how to buy it. So this is more useful for them and is more likely to get, to get them to convert. And then when we do our measurement planning, we choose the KPIs based on what makes sense for each of these phases. So it doesn't make sense to measure an infographic on how well it sold something. It makes more sense to measure that based on social share because it's more likely to do that and we know that we, we're using this as a brain awareness thing rather than a, hey, let's get you to buy something right now. So um, this probably should have been earlier in here, but <laughs> this is the Mosaic Guide, which actually goes with Experian Simmons, where you can get access to all of, well, most of their data right now. You can get all of their um, segments that you can use yourself, and it's free. Um, I'll send the deck to Matt so he can send to you guys. The link is right here. Um, Experian also has a tool called Hitwise. And this, you can essentially put in any site that you want, and it's going to give you all the keywords that people have uh, used to get to that site. And what's nice about it is that you can get that data in context with the mosaic types. So essentially, you get the um, <coughs> keywords at the demographic level just straight from this tool. And we actually did a webinar with them a few weeks ago. Excuse me, a case study on their data that you guys should probably check out too. Yahoo Clues, another free tool. It's pretty awesome because you can just throw in a keyword and you can get the demographics behind the people searching um, based on Yahoo, obviously, which is a much smaller group than Google, but it's better to have something than nothing. That's kind of how I feel about things too. Uh, <laughs> share types. The New York Times actually did research where they segmented all the different types of people online and to different share types. So if you don't if you're only trying to build personas for link building, you can actually just use this. And uh, the link is here as well. And it was a pretty cool study. I liked it. The Facebook ad creator, <clears throat> like I said, we use the social APIs to figure out whether or not these personas are valid. So what we do is we just plug in the demographics and then the interests and we see how many people are valid um, on Facebook. And there's over a billion people on Facebook, so if there's 15,000 on there, it means it's a valid segment. Social listening is also really useful because, again, you can understand who the people are behind the searches. Uh, this guy types in 3D TV. I can go to his, his Facebook, or excuse me, his uh, Twitter profile and see he's 16. He's from Glasgow. And look through a few more of his tweets, see what he's into. Online stalking at its best. <laughs> Then you can also uh, mine your analytics. And this is actually really useful, especially if you have um, on-site search set up. So you can see what people, where people landed on your site and then see what they search for instead. So you can understand what they were actually looking for when they landed on your site for a given keyword. And we use this to get a sense of who, who is already coming to the site, how engaged are they. You know, if they, if they type in a given keyword and we see that their visit duration is like, you know, three minutes, like, okay, this, this keyword is relevant for these people for this landing page, but if it's like 31 seconds instead, it's, maybe it's not. So we know that's an optimization um, opportunity, and we can also get some more information about how people are thinking when they're landing on the site. So this is what the whole fuss was about with us getting this on the right computer, because we want to do a live version of it. I'm going to um, get you guys to answer some questions, if this works. And then Norris is going to build personas about you guys live. And then when we get to the end of the deck, we're going to share them with you. Please let this work. Wait a second. Right. <laughs> so take your phone out, text this number, um, answer the question, what age are you? And then if, if, if you're between 18 and 22, which I'm guessing some of you are, could be wrong. Maybe second. Anyway, text this number to this number, whatever your answer is. Is it like $20 per text or? <laughs> 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 it's all night It's all night <laughs> It's free 99. It's our business. <laughs> so, I guess everybody texting. Yeah. Yep. 
Awesome. All right, so most of, what, uh, yeah, most of the people in here between 23 and 27? All right, we got the maximum words. All right, gender. Surprising. <laughs> 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 Guys. All right, maximum votes. All right, have you purchased a digital textbook before? I forgot to mention, the client in this case is going to be, what's it called? Inkling. Inkling.com, which is a digital textbook sales place. They're awesome, check them out. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> but they wouldn't hire me. <laughs> Next question is, have you used a search engine to find digital textbooks before? I'm going to guess this one's going to be mostly yes. <laughs> you still have to ask it though. I mean, it's digital. would not it inherently required? Not necessarily. You have a certain segment of population that still believe in paper by books like yourself. Right, but they're inherently looking for a digital textbook. But it's one of those things like, are you look how have you used a search engine? People could just type in. We have these type of conversations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, would you switch to only digital textbooks? I'll tell you right now, I would not. Yeah, I'd be stick on the beach, you know? Exactly. Take your iPad. I lost my iPad on a plane, sir. True story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's interesting. Nope. Yes, his mic influenced the decision. Yeah, I did. Exactly. <laughs> See, then you go get the <laughs> <laughs> so That's, a, that's a thing that to note about market research. So when people have focus groups, typically the moderator does influence what uh, people will say. So I'm going to be quiet for the next one. That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, at this point, we would also do competitive analysis because we want to see how we're getting beat in search. Obviously, this layer of actual marketing is something that people think is, um, I don't know. Some people think you have to do it, some think you don't. But doing this is actually critical because you need to understand why you're getting beat. Like, do they have more links to you than you? Do they have better quality links? Um, is it the social factor, so on and so forth? So you need to understand what you're up against. So at this point, we would do that. But the thing is, Search mark, search metrics essentials is awesome for this. When I used to do this, you know, when I was at Razorfish, I have to I used to have to literally look through every site and page that I was comparing. This tool, you just put in a domain name or a URL and it gives it to you. It's fantastic. Love those Germans. Um, the thing is with competitive analysis, is it's not something that you can do once. So at iPower, we actually have a, a dynamic real-time competitive analysis tool where we put in the domains and it just continually updates, continually checks all these different metrics. And then we can set uh, alerts to tell us, you know, have, have they done more or did they ramp up a ton of links. So you can actually build one of these yourself using um, these tools that uh, Chris Lee, formerly of Sierra Interactive, made for Google Docs. So you download this, you, you run into Google Docs, and you can add all these different uh, metrics from these different sites and create that same dashboard that I have right here. So you should do that. Um, at that point, we finally do the keyword research because we understand what's going on in the space. We understand who the people are in the space. Now let's get to the point where we know what they're searching. So we build what we call a keyword portfolio, and this is how we kind of differ from every agency because we... Uh, put these in context of those target personas and the need states, as well as the standard keyword segments that everybody else does. But we look at what the opportunity is based on the, um, the search volume and then what the site has gotten historically and then where they are in the rankings. So we've actually added to this since this screenshot where we have also the rank zone and what was the other thing? Uh, uh, we do like business needs and things like yeah. that. So this is essentially what's going to drive the rest of the campaign. Uh, it's going to you know, filter into the, the content strategy and everything else, but this is kind of the blueprint after the persona. So at this point, we would also do the site audit because we understand who the people are, we understand what the goals are, and then we want to make sure that you know, the site itself is aligning with that. 
and um, we we're making sure that you know everything's tight from a technical standpoint. But we also do a content on it, and this is again what um, Devin does, where he goes through every piece of content and decides whether it's share worthy, link worthy, what is it, how can we improve it, and who is, who is it targeting. And in some cases, we're finding that you know the sites are not targeting the people that we've identified at all. So that, that's a huge overhaul for us to have to update all that content. And we also take an inventory of the brand relationship. So as you see, there's really only like six brands in the world and they own everything else. <laughs> And we figure out, you know, who are they down with so we can leverage those relationships. So in the case of, you know, you, you have uh, a brand that's, I can't even think of an example right now. But anyway, we would use those other properties for building links and for spreading the message of the site. And, um, you know, just leveraging what's already there before we have to go out and make our own relationships. <clears throat> Offline assets as well. There's all types, there's people, you know, who are you directly contacted with or connected with? Do you own a venue? Uh, does the venue have a website? Are there things that you can give away? We want to understand all these things in the context of this because, especially when we get to our social strategy and building links, we need to know what we have in inventory. And then at that point, we do a measurement plan because we want to understand how the rest of this campaign will be judged. And how is it driving business value? You don't have to take pictures. You're going to get to take this home. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can take my picture. <laughs> so this is the blueprint for how we judge how well we're doing. And at this point, I'm going to turn on the better. <laughs>